friends and welcome to your horoscope for October of 2020. We're Virgo. This month your ruling planet is going to go retrograde plus we have got three moons this month so it is definitely kind of a movable month but what it's not is a heavy move forward month not quite yet. The retrograde energy continues to come down as we creep forward and forward and forward. We will welcome Pluto out of retrograde um, this month as well and so that does help the energy begin to move forward but this month more so than anything, one of the things that I actually had a little bit of a concern about for you is with Mercury going retrograde, going retrograde in the energy of Scorpio. And I know that's just the third house and then it will back up into the energy of Libra, which is the second house. I have this sense for you this month, Virgo, of a self-confidence challenge. And I say challenge because it doesn't have to be an issue. It can be the place that you actually do some growth and growing. Almost as if opportunities are around you, they're available, they've been presenting and you are kind of taking that step back and going okay well what do I think what's going on in my head what's going on with my confidence and esteem so if that's something that is on your table this month please let me know in the comment section down below and know as a Taurus who I'm doing a lifetime of self-worth issues I have a lot of love and a lot of support for you this month okay all right this month we have got a lot going on in the Eaton Roots Jessica Lanyata will be here Shane M. Nygaard we've got Giulio Pellegrini will be here Natai Kira um, Shakira Tabor will be here basil farrington it is a loaded month lots of good interviews coming up and now because youtube has gone ad crazy you can also come and find these interviews on patreon where you can see them ad free become a patreon with me on patreon and you can see them ad free as well the patreon will continue to grow because i'd like to spend a little bit more in-depth time with you so that'll continue to grow but if you want to see them ad free come on over, get signed up. All of that's in the description box down below. As well, this month, the third and the fourth, I'll be jumping over with Astrology University for the Summit of Astrology and World events. So if you'd like to do some free astrology study, come on over, join. That link's in the description box. If you want all of the talks, you can purchase the All Access Plan, but to watch it and engage is free. As well, the Nightlife series, the speaker series with Achuta Bhava, I will be speaking over there about astrology and social media. So if you're interested in that, it's free as well. We just need you to register, okay? Everything in the description box down below. All right, Virgo. So as we jump into this month on the first, we've got a full moon happening at nine degrees of Aries. Now, this is an interesting moon because not only does it light up and shed a whole bunch of light over your eighth house, the space of joint resources, intimacy, sex, your sexuality, the things that are your reproductive organs, all of these things that are deeply intimate and also connected to other things very deep within us. And this can be, you know, from your reproductive system to your money. If, if somebody changes directions with your money, but you have a joint connection to them, that is going to very intimately affect you. So think eighth house issues as we're looking at this full moon that says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. And sometimes what happens in the eighth house is we we are called to detox or declutter or let go of something in some way. One of those things could be debt. Where do you feel like you're in debt in some way? And this is a strictly financial debt. If you've got the means, Virgo, pay it off, pay it down. A little bit of self-sacrifice now will save you a lot of stress later. You're a mutable sign. The things you can take off of your plate to allow that mutable energy to not be in the state of worry is really very good for you. Other things that I think of too, though, are what, what's happening where you're coming into a joint connection with somebody as this full moon rolls around. Now, the ruler of this full moon is Mars and Mars is retrograde at this time in that energy of Aries so like I said I don't think that this area is passionately pushing forward with any kind of fervor or anything like that instead it's much more of a full moon that says what's your strategy here what are we doing what are our desires in this area let's redo the strategy but you have a lot of light shed on it including your subconscious thinking your subconscious view of things have you had things that have um, you've been fearful of them and that is something that's on your table. And now this full moon saying, let's adjust that, right? Let's let's dig into that fear and let's adjust that. But there's no real grr, forward movement um, happening with this particular energy just yet, okay? On the second, we see Venus moving into the energy of Virgo. So you're cute. I mean, I don't know what else to say. No, <laughs> you just did. There's a magnetism that comes to us. It lights up our skin. It lights up our, our cheeks and our hair and our smile. And there's just a magnetism that Venus brings when it comes into your sign. So one of the other things that it does is I like Venus here because I think she gives you some harmony. 
some balance within yourself. This idea of what makes me feel balanced, what makes me feel beautiful. Venus here as well, because it just makes you attractive this month, Virgo. Opportunities, including financial ones, relationship ones, it's like they're coming to you with very little effort on your part. Now, that doesn't mean you have to sit back and just be cute and wait for the world to happen to you. Not that I even think you would, but it does bring a magnetism that you're not having to work as hard. This is this is work smarter, not harder at its finest. So allow that Venetian energy to come and to wash over you and bring you something really really beautiful, really um, in a sense of harmony and balance for what you're looking for at this particular time. And I, again, think that this energy is critical because there seems to be something in the self-confidence that seems to be a bit shaken this month, Virgo. So this will be a helper to that as well. On the fourth, we see Pluto coming direct. Now we've got that whole Capricorn Council out of retrograde and direct. This lights up your fifth house space. Now, because Pluto is the destructor and it tears things down, it's like this Phoenix energy. As it's been retrograde in your fifth house, things about children, about um, where you take a risk, the things that you love, the things that bring you joy, pleasure, play, all of those kinds of things. Pluto has been destructing and reconstructing that area. It's been literally transforming it. So now as Pluto is direct, what happens is secrets, fears, your deepest desires come to the surface. For some of you, I do think that this will even be the time if you have things going on with children, maybe the adoption comes to a close and you get to officially make that adoption or you have that baby because Pluto does like to Phoenix. It says, okay, ready to die off in this way and we're gonna live in another. So whatever it is though, as Pluto is direct here, now you start to feel these footprints of stepping those desires forward and transforming this area of your life. It's almost as if when you look back and you get to, you know, 2020, 2022, as you're looking over this fifth house area of your life, you're going to be like, man, I was so afraid I was never going to be able to fill in the blank fifth house thing. And that looks a much different way in your life. So it's very exciting. On the 13th, we see Mercury, who is in Scorpio, step into that retrograde at 12 degrees of Scorpio. So this lights up that third house. And this is where I'm wondering if the confidence shifts just a little bit. Now, Mercury has obviously been in shadow up until now, but I think truly on the day, there's something about it that hits. And I'm not walking you into a self-confidence issue. So if that ain't you, don't take it on. But if this is you, Scorpio is here to break this apart and say, what, why do we feel like we're not confident? Are we in waters where we're not fully control, in control and know everything by plan? And that's okay. That's okay to not always have the plan, not always know what to do, Virgo. So don't let that kill your self-confidence. Instead, allow that Scorpio retrograde to walk you back through maybe some of the details. Do you need to learn something? Third house. Do you need to ask for help? third house? Do you need to write that book? Do you need to do that work? Do you need to get into the workings of your mind and the workings of the way that you communicate? For some of you too, this will just be contracts and things like that. It's time to go back over them. So you're going to retrograde, review, reconnect, reevaluate, re-edit, things like that. Book writing, all of that, you could be reviewing that at this time as well. On the 16th, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Libra at 24 degrees, and this is just, just next door, so it's going to light up your second house space. We're going to plant our seeds of intention here in this second house. Now, we've learned some things at the full moon at the beginning of the month in that eighth house. Eight and two sit across from each other housing-wise. So what did you learn that you maybe needed to detox or get a different handle or a different view on in that eighth house? And now as we're here in the second house of income, self-esteem, value, your possessions. What did you learn that you want to start something fresh here? You want to start a fresh financial or a fresh value um, base here and you would want it to be balanced. You would want to be in the right relation Libra to this area of your life. For some of you, yes, absolutely this could be. You've got Venus still in your sign. You could literally magnetize money to you or magnetize an opportunity to you at this particular new moon and we watch it and we'll catch back up and see what's formed by the time we get to the next new moon um, in November. On the 22nd, the sun is going to move into Scorpio, joining Mercury up there. So again, in the third house space, the sun is light, heat, life, and vitality. There's motivation. There's movement that is available here. And you are just motivated to achieve in this particular area. And I really feel like this is a sense of learning. This is a sense of... I, I want to teach, I want to share, I need to ask for help, I have to communicate in some way um, that is deep, 
that's maybe even a little bit scary for me to ask for help in this way, that's maybe even a little bit taboo for me to be talking about or teaching about, but whatever it is, the sun is here, you've got it for four weeks, use that big bright energy to light up the communication. Your planet, your ruling planet is retrograde, so any help you can get to let the words come right out of your mouth, to let the learning come right out of your mouth, I think is all for the best. So if you are studying too, I want to say this, that Mercury retrograde is making me think that perhaps um, you're going down the track and you wanted to study something and you go, oh, wait a minute, I kind of would like to go this way. It'll also help you get into the depth of studying something because Scorpio likes to take things apart and see how and why they work at a deeper level. On the 24th, we've got Venus trine Saturn. And I just mentioned this day to you because I feel like if you're going to make some kind of commitment, this is a great day to do it because a long-term commitment is absolutely favored here. And again, the thing I like about it the most is that it is good and it is long-term and can be lasting for you. So look at where Saturn and Venus live in the housing areas of your chart and see which two areas might be trying to talk to each other to create this commitment that you maybe are trying to form on that day, okay? On the 27th, this retrograde is gonna move back into the energy of Libra, so to the second house. Now you're reviewing the money, you're reviewing the value, you're reviewing the possessions you had a please detox your life full moon at the beginning of the month we're here at the end of the month going back into that across the street area what did you clean out what do you need to clean out oh this is interesting so maybe new balance maybe there is a new relationship in your life and you are in this retrograde to try and understand it and you're trying to rebalance it and, and the value of all of that in your life. Almost like, you know, did you did you adopt a dog or did you bring another energy into your space? And now you're trying to learn the value of the balance around that, the value of this particular relationship, which would make sense why you would need so much help learning this month as well. As we end this month, we're going to end with a full moon in Taurus right there, conjunct Uranus. This lights up your ninth house space. So the full moon, end something, acknowledge something, make an adjustment. Lots of light is shed here. You've been working on for something for a while. Now it's time to bring it to some kind of culmination. And it doesn't mean that it ends. It means it ends as it has been. That's why you could just be making an adjustment to something. It just can't go on any further this way. In the ninth house is the house of expansion education do you have an educational program that's ending ninth house or you have a pregnancy that's ending nine months right um is there something going on in a training and it's coming to a closure or to an adjustment legal things could be ending at this time but whatever happens with it it will be unexpected likely right it will be a shake-up deviates from the plan not what you thought it was going to be not when you thought it was going to be more than likely because uranus brings this aspect in here of surprise like ta-da here it is so i wouldn't be surprised at all if you are seeing something around give or take even two or three days before this full moon and before we even get to the next full moon before we get it to the check-in at the new new moon, there's activity that has been quite shocking, quite surprising, quite out of the norm that shows up on your doorstep. All right, Virgo, I think it's going to be a completely useful month. You've got a lot of education that seems to be on your table this month. Take time. Give yourself a break. When the ruling planet is retrograde, we need a little grace. We need to allow ourselves to slow with the vibration of that energy as well and go back. We don't get weird during a retrograde. We get wise. So take the wisdom of your ruling planet, taking a slowdown, and you take one too and see what's living for you in these particular areas, okay? All right, Virgos, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I love you a ton. I'm sending you lots of support for whatever you are going through, experiencing, and creating this month. And I'll see you next month. Bye, everyone.